Welcome to the Mogul Podcast. I'm Tim Bryson, Director of Athlete Education and Compliance, and I'm the host of our show. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning community member, welcome back. As y'all know, the Mogul Podcast is dedicated to educating all NIL athletes and brands on how to ensure compliance, how to maximize NIL activity, and how to make a difference in the ever-evolving NIL landscape. Today, we're back in person, uh, back in person, yet in another city, uh, the great city of Memphis, Tennessee, I happen to be on a beautiful campus, which I'll talk about in a few, uh, few seconds, um, speaking with one of the leaders at this institution, uh, someone who's continuing to set the bar high, um, but really model the way in regards to what NIL education should look like, particularly at the Division Three athletics level. So without further ado, y'all help me welcome Mr. Jim Duncan. Thank you. Very happy to be here. Glad you're on campus. Really excited about our partnership with Mogul. For sure. And I appreciate the setup, yo. It feels very, I don't know, it gives me official, right? It gives me a right. uh, celebratory <laughs> moment and occasion for sure. Yeah. And, you know, if you, you've been here and you've, you've toured the, the facilities. One thing that we try to do, we are a Division three school, obviously, but uh, when we go through our renovations and remodels, we try to have that Division one look yep. um, so that our athletes feel um, when they leave the academic space and the athletic space, they, they know they're leaving one area and going to the other. So we try to make it as nice as possible uh, for them and, and really try to operate um, those facilities in a first class manner. You definitely tell. And it does not feel like a Division three institution at all, which I'm going to talk about later in this episode. Uh, but Jim, I think it's huge, right, for us to not just talk about our partnership, but really first start our podcast as we do every week of learning more about your story, right? So we were talking a little bit earlier, Kansas City is yeah. home, but Memphis is also home at the right. same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so for those who may not know you, you uh, sure. and for those who may do, uh, just remind us, like, what's your story? Yeah, so um, I, I grew up in Kansas City, went to the University of Kansas, go Jayhawks, <laughs> and Rose Links, um, <laughs> uh, and really actually moved here for a job, thought I was going to stay for two years. Um, met my wife during that time, and she's a fifth-generation Memphian. So here I am. Uh, have three adult sons. One of them who graduated from Rhodes last year. Um, started. I've been. This is my fifteenth, or I'm by my fifteenth year anniversary next month at Rhodes. Uh, came as a fundraiser. That's my background. Um, was a major gift officer, and then knew there was a space in the athletic fundraising world that we were missing, and. Um, the way we operate at Rhodes is um, we uh, we're able to bring uh, ideas forward. I took an idea to our VP of development. We were all over it. Um, started the Lynx Club nine years ago, and since then we've raised about nine million dollars for capital facilities improvements. Some that you've seen today, Tim, and and then um, another three and a half four million dollars just for uh, operational budget. So. Um, a year and a half ago or so, uh, Matt Dean, our, our former AD, was retiring. Um, I was asked to be in the search for the AD and went through the national search and um, have been the athletic director for about, I guess, going on 20 months now. Yeah, wow. Congratulations, Yeah, Joe. thank you. It's a lot of work. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. I can definitely tell. And I think that the chair, if you will, is definitely a position that's not to be taken for granted. Right. Um, but as you mentioned before, right, it, Division three institution, a special institution, um, but what makes Rhodes in particular so special? Like, what about this community? What about this institution, this university, this college, if you will, makes it so special? Well, I think, you know, one of the things we talk about is family and it's not just talk. We are all for each other. We pull for one another. Um, I think you can feel it when you walk around the campus. Um, you know, we have 2000 students that um, they're really smart and they're here to get a great education, but they're also heavily involved in other things outside of the classroom. Um, I know from us, from an athletic standpoint, we have 530 student athletes, which is about 30% of our student population. Um, we're big on culture. Um, we know that if we don't have the right culture, you can't win. Um, and for us, winning is defined basically in, in three ways. It's winning in the classroom. Um, we expect that our students graduate in four years. Um, last year, we had 405 of our student athletes make the all-conference, all-academic team. Uh, which requires a cumulative GPA of 3.25 or higher. Um, so those are the expectations academically, athletically. Um, you know, our expectation is when you walk across the stage of graduation, you've got a championship ring on your finger, yeah. at least one, yeah. um, hopefully multiple, um, and have uh, some NCAA tournament experiences that go along with that. And then that third is is kind of, again, where Mogul fits in with us. It's 
um, being active, being active in the Memphis community, being active in the Rhodes community, having outside interest, um, because we know that having those three things on um, resumes for our student athletes when they are seeking highly competitive law schools, med schools, um, we have a lot of our students that work in the nonprofit field. So we want to make sure we're providing them those opportunities while they're under our umbrella to excel in that next step that they're moving. So um, lofty goals for sure. Um, and we don't shy away from them. We know it's hard to be a student here. It's hard to be an athlete here. It's hard to be involved in the campus community here. And what we do is expect um, our athletes to be involved in all three. Um, but we also have to pro provide them those opportunities and that mentorship to do it. Um, and I think that really is the difference for us at the D3 level is the deep personal connections that our coaches are making um, with our student athletes. I, I'm not saying it doesn't happen at the D1 level, but um, we don't see the transfer portal as much here. So our rosters stay the same um, for the most part. So you get to watch um, young people grow. Um, and it's our job for to teach them, try, you know, to be accountable to themselves, to be their own advocates. Um, and that most of the time is done from athletes to coaches, which kind of permeates into the student body. I can, yeah, like I said, I, when I told you earlier, right, I was a little bit late getting here today because I literally think it was University Street, University Boulevard. Yeah. I was about to turn left and I'm like, is that a castle? Like, <laughs> right. a gate? Like, where, <laughs> like, where are we, yo? Like, yeah. <laughs> so I had to go down, make the U-turn. I'm like, this is, all right, here, this is how we started, right? I think yeah. it's definitely something that catches your eye off rip. Absolutely. But as you mentioned, right, lofty goals. Uh, I think lofty goals also are very synonymous with vision. But along this, you know, this uh, this walk, right, this walk towards this larger vision, you have had wins, right? Small, Absolutely. large, and in the middle. Yeah. So what are some of the wins you're proud of to this point, you know, at least 20 months into your uh, role as AD? Yeah. You know, I think we've built, a, we've built a really strong organizational culture inside the building, which, which you know, kind of bleeds into our coaches and our teams. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that um, I really want to, even in the, in the athletic development role, one of the things that I thought we were lacking was um, – a branded apparel deal because everybody was kind of all over the board. So um, we're very, we do our due diligence around here. As you know, um, we ask a lot of questions. We want to make sure who we're partnering with meets our expectations and culture and goals. Um, so I'm really proud that we are partners with Nike now. Um, Nike has a huge presence here in Memphis in the Memphis community. Um, so it was important for us to be involved there. Um, so that was a huge win for us. Our, our student athletes really involved, really like wearing that branded Nike gear and it's all the, you know, it's a similar look. Um, so, and then, you know, we've had some huge successes um, on the field. Um, you know, just in February alone, we won the conference uh, swim meet on the women's side. And then our women's basketball team just won the conference tournament, go to the NCAA tournament. Uh, this weekend for the before they won the conference tournament for the third year in a row. Um, so um, we don't shy away from talking about winning. There's so many Division three schools that don't have that as part of their athletics. Um, our motto is we're going to go play people yeah. and see what happens. Our students love the fact that that's what we've moved into because, um, you know, they're they're collegiate athletes. They want to win. And and. While it's a little bit a different scenario because you'll see our student athletes, you know, running from their three o'clock <laughs> yes. lab to the locker room, running on the field at 415. Um, but um, that's part of who we are. And again, it's it's uh, we always talk about expectations and how to meet those expectations. And if you set lofty expectations and you don't meet those expectations, you're still done pretty well. That's very true. I definitely agree with that. I think one thing I was excited about coming to Rose was uh, Memphis, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Memphis is a beautiful city. I haven't yep. been uh, probably in 20 years at this point. Yeah. A lot different, isn't it? A lot different. <laughs> yeah. A lot different. Yeah. But my favorite player, John Morant, he always talks Absolutely. about, right? They got to they gotta play us. Yeah. Uh, and I love that, right. that model, that mentality. I think it also is embodied and reflected here at Rose as well. Um, but before moving to segment two, right, we, we talked a little bit more, a little bit about your uh, role as AD. Mm -hmm. But getting to this point, like any influential decisions or environments that you have either navigated and or have made uh, along your journey to become the AD here at Rose College? I'm always in learning mode. Um, I'm a big, I'm a big reader. Um, I listen. I, I was fortunate enough 
in my um, athletic development role to be on some national committees with some Division One athletic directors who have kind of become peers and mentors. And, and while their job is – we have the same title, the Division One AD and Division Three AD jobs are much different, but – um, I think, you know, it's, I don't come from a coaching background. I'm the first, I think I'm the first true administrator to fill the AD role here that didn't have a, a, you know, coaching background. So I think I walked in, I had relationships with most of the coaches, but I think there was some hesitancy because I've not been on the sidelines. Um, so that was a wall that, that we kind of had to work through and, um, I'm transparent communication is is transparent um i am visible i'm a fan um i try to attend uh you know i think last year i went to 85 roads events i you know i was i drove 1086 miles last weekend going from memphis to barry georgia for the men's basketball tournament then to danville kentucky on sunday for the women's tournament and then home um but I need. I wanted to be there. We were playing in the tournament and for the championships, and um, I think the student athletes appreciate that. They know I'm on their side. Um, I, anecdotally, I, I will tell you, I, I like for our student athletes to call me Jim, and that's a little bit difficult. And um, they're pretty good at it. But usually, on, on our first years for parents weekend, I'll be talking to a parent and an athlete will come by and, you know, slap me on the back and say, Hey, Jim, thanks for coming. And their parents' eyes will get about this big. I'm like, no, no, that we're all on the same team. And, yeah. and, and, you know, you can't sit, I don't guard a desk. I don't guard my chair. You can't sit behind a chair and expect the results that we expect. You've got to be, um, you've got to be in the mix and especially with our student athletes. I'm, you know, you mentioned earlier how, how smart they are and how many questions uh, you got to be on your toes. You got to be on your A game because that's the expectation. So. I love that segment too. Really here to talk about our partnership, right? Absolutely. And, um, as well as NIL. I think the analogy you just mentioned, um, like sitting behind a chair, hiding behind a desk, you, you, y'all have chosen, Rose has chosen not to hide behind this. It's not for division three desk. Oh, absolutely not. Why was that important to step behind, step in front of that right and lead the way? Well, you know, I think, look, you know when the when the NL, when the NIL started, and then and I guess it was July twenty one when the NCAA kind of put their interim ruling and legislation in, we started having conversations about what this means, and and obviously you know the first we kind of had a wait and see attitude because honestly we didn't know. I don't think anybody knew, right? <laughs> and and the NCAA you know was kind of trying to feel their way along. Um, but we were paying attention and I was talking to some of my peers who I mentioned earlier, but I, and, and Kim house was instrumental in this. And she, when she took the job in December, mm -hmm. we kind of made it a goal to at least have some intelligent conversations with people yeah. to try to figure out what the space looked like for us. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and our space obviously is a little bit different than the division one space. Mm -hmm. And then. And Tim, we got into it and we realized there's a lot more to it than we that anybody uh, that we knew for sure and that we couldn't do it in house. And then we started asking questions like we do. And and um, I think Kim kind of, you know, met with you all first. Um, and then as we got into our conversations, it was obvious to us that a mogul was in the space for the long term had the best interest of the student athletes in mind. Um, and quite honestly, for us, um, we didn't know a lot of information. Y'all were coming into a division three space that was different. Um, and I think we just enjoyed the fact that we were having conversations and building relationships based on what we thought could happen, but we didn't know, right? Um, and I think it was probably a leak of faith for y'all to get involved in the division three level, it was certainly different for us. Um, you know, when I was at the NCAA convention in January in our ADs meeting, um, there were some mobile brochures on the table and I was like, oh, that's the company we do. And then I turned over my faces there. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> and then, um, but you know, it, there was almost a sense of kind of disbelief from some of the ADs yes. and, uh, that we were taking this on, yes. um, but it's who we are. It is we want that student athlete experience and 
We wanted to be involved in the space for a myriad of reasons. It will help our student athletes, whether it's from product or financial or whatever, and that's very important. Mm -hmm. But for us, what it does is it will help, we'll have the opportunity to mentor and teach through our partnership, you know, our student athletes, how to, how to really brand themselves, yes. which is so important these days from a communication standpoint, whether it's orally, written, social media, mm -hmm. um, to negotiations, to being able to have conversations with nonprofits or, you know, or, or companies and build that brand for yourself because that's what life's all about, you know, and that's what they need as they move forward and they graduate here. And it's such a central part of what we're trying to achieve from that student athlete experience. Now, and, you know, like I said, you can tell it is based off the conversations that not just you're leading um, nationally, but again, the questions that athletes are asking here. So what I was shocked, you know, speaking with athletes earlier, they're asking a lot of questions about career development. Right? Absolutely. And I think that was huge for me. I'm like, yo, that, this is, that's like my baby. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, right, I, yeah. I, I, right, I came from yeah. that space. I, yeah. I love that because yeah. one, I mean, we, we, in Mogul and myself, we talk about NIL is career development, right? Absolutely. NIL, brand, digital presence, all very synonymous with right. tied to career development. Yeah. But the second thing, right, the question about, you know, it's not for us, it's not for me, it's not D3. Again, I'm a, we'll debt that conversation tonight for sure, yeah. nail in the coffin. But I said to them, I'm like, Division three athletes in particular are more poised and prepared to lead in the NIL era than people, than them themselves think, and then right. Division two and Division one could even imagine. Right. The reason why, ownership. Yes. It's all about ownership of your learning, right, of yeah. your, your time, yeah. follow through, and division, Rose athletes in particular, I mean, they're right there. Yeah. And so I think that's what I'm excited about with our partnership is that, yo, like, I don't think people have seen this in real, in real time or real life yet because it hasn't, hasn't been done before. Yeah. We're first. Absolutely. <laughs> we get to lead no, the and that's, yeah. And, and that's great for us. And that was, that was really a drawing card for us as well because yeah. we like to be in that leadership role yes. and we like to partner with people who are in that, le in those leadership roles. And, uh, it was just a, it was a natural fit. And, and I know we'll probably talk about the, the clean energy, uh, partnership, but I, that that's our wheelhouse, you know, because our athletes, there's no athletic scholarships at Division Three. There's no training table, so our athletes, I'm, I mentioned before, literally will run from class to practice, and sometimes the nutritional part of that goes away, and you know, the clean energy just fit naturally into that. And with y'all's help, you know, you were. Brought it to us and we we're like, yeah, this is all, this, yeah. this fits us, yeah. you know? And that's what, I think one of the things that is exciting for us is y'all know us and you know kind of what fits us and what fits our student athletes. Um, and, and, you know, I think NIL sometimes has such a negative connotation because of the, probably the division one model, but for us, it, it really, it encompasses so many things of what we're <laughs> yes. trying to accomplish yeah. here. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree. So you mentioned clean energy. Right? Yeah. And so tonight we'll announce uh, that Rose College is the first. Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to jump oh, the gun. No, no, no. I'm glad <laughs> I you get did. excited. I'm, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. But we'll announce tonight, right? Okay, right. That uh, Rose College is the first Division Three athletic department to have a department-wide deal yeah. for the college athletes, which, again, is groundbreaking. In some ways, shocking, given that we're now almost two years in the NIL. Right. <laughs> but then, given your point, it was wait and see. Now it's like, we got to find out. Absolutely. No, yeah. And, and, and you know, for, for us, again, we do a lot of due diligence. But once we decide, it is, let's go. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes we get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, and, and I tell our coaches all the time, you know, we want to push the envelope. We want to be the leaders. And if there's things that we want to do, come talk and let's, you know, it's our basketball teams. You know, there's a huge national tournament in Las Vegas yeah. every, every holiday season. We're to the point now from a competition standpoint that we can go. So yeah. our coaches that came and said, do you think we can go play in this? I'm like, well, let's go find some money. Yeah. We found some money, so we're going to play, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I, yeah. and I think again, that just adds to that experience for athletes, you know, they're going to get to go and play in a pretty high profile tournament in, in Las Vegas. Las Vegas yeah. um, and it's culture bonding, something they will remember when they're, when they're alums, um, you know, so it's, it's just that whole division three, just because you're division three doesn't mean that you have to operate in a manner that's not first class yeah. and we want to be the leader in that division three space in whatever we do. I agree. I think, I mean, as you mentioned before, right, I think the sports in general is a copycat 
industry. Yeah, for sure. In many ways, it's <laughs> right. Like facilities, right? Right. <laughs> At some point, we got to step out of being copycat and be original. Yeah. Right? Be trailblazing, yeah. be groundbreaking. Right. And so, again, I'm excited for the partnership with Rose because we're going to do groundbreaking work. Um, and it's going to be work that uh, is going to bring other departments to think about their partnerships you know, globally. Yeah. But also think about how we prepare Rose College athletes for not just now, but also life after competition, which yep. I'm excited about right. personally. Um, segment three, Jim, right? We're winding down here. Um, our conversation today has definitely spanned across really just being a leader, right? Talking about the partnership, learning more about your story, which I think is important context for people to understand, you know, how we got to where we are mm -hmm. today. But as we leave this conversation today, what are three things you want our listeners to take away uh, from our time together? Well, I, you know, I think we probably hit on the first thing is, is there's always this misconception of, of a Division three university and college and our student athletes. Um, I think that, you know, the one takeaway is we're going to operate in a first class manner. We're going to have partnerships with Nike and Mogul and, 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 and partners that really are in it for our student athletes. Um, I think, you know, you, you hit on it. Um, our, our biggest goal in this, while the, the product or the financial aspect of NIL is great, I think for us, it's the career development, it's the education, it's the, it's the chance to build your own brand when you're 18, 19 years old. Mm -hmm. So you can start to build that brand that follows you. Mm -hmm. um, and Mogul and the platform, the Mogul Cooperative will help with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think finally, um, it's that everlasting kind of culture piece, the, the student athlete experience that we talk about. It's just another area that Rhodes offers that nobody else right now is offering. Um, you know, are we going to get recruits coming to Rhodes just because of an NIL platform? Probably not. Are we going to talk about it and sell it? Of course we are, because it, it's it differentiates us from from others. Love so, it. Yeah, we're well, you can tell we're really excited. I, I, know. I can definitely <laughs> yeah. tell. Yeah. Well, Jim, I enjoyed our time today, my yeah. friend. Thank I, you, man. I, I appreciate I, it. I told you before, it's my first time in a while being back, but look forward to coming back very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, whether that's for a baseball game, a Rose College event, and definitely a Grizzlies game. Grizzlies game. game. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll get we we'll get you we'll get back. you good yeah. we'll get you good seats. I might come back playoffs. <laughs> yeah. I might come I might there, see the playoffs. There you go. <laughs> Legit. Thanks for talking. Thanks very much, Tim. I appreciate it. Everyone else, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the mogul podcast uh, stay tuned uh, as we'll drop another podcast next week on helping everyone including all nil athletes and brands ensure compliance maximize nil activity and how to make a difference in the ever-evolving nil landscape as always get paid get mogul